Well, hey guys, welcome to day 19. Glad to have you here with me in the 31 days of abiding. Chapter 19 is entitled In Affliction and Trial. Let me come back to our kind of base verse here in John 15. Jesus says, John 15, 1, I am the true vine, my father is the vine dresser, the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken in you. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. Hmm. You know, I'm recording this today in France, and uh, one of the things I love about France, I know we have that in places in America, but you have vineyards here. You know, we visited a vineyard with some friends this summer and um, did like a little wine tasting thing. That I love going to vineyards, especially well cultivated vineyards. And I actually have a, a vine growing behind me here. I don't know if you can see it. I think I have this bouquet thing setting on my camera, but there's actually right just behind my hand here right now is a little vine growing my wife planted that uh, it's probably going to spread all over our house in years to come and um, it's really interesting though in France when you get a real serious um, vineyard cultivator um, of wine of grapes they they spend such care and attention over the these vines the soils they planted it it's like they literally come with a pair of nail scissors, so to speak, and trim this thing and know exactly how to cut it back and let it blossom and all that. And come on, we don't often like this thing, but Jesus says the Father will prune us that we may bear more fruit. Now, I, I honestly don't know anybody who's ever come to that verse and said, yeah, awesome, Lord, prune me. I'll finish with that, but maybe we should maybe we should at times and the father looks at our life and he loves us but he wants to prune us that we might bear much fruit come on all of you who have children especially younger children will know what i mean at this you love them you are a million percent committed to them and yet there are things in the character that you want to prune you want to groom you want to give them a haircut at times and it's it's funny how most kids hate getting a haircut you know it's, uh, well, I have a, a dog, we call her a puppy, even though she's 11, because she thinks she's still a puppy. And she hates having a haircut. She's a labradoodle, so she needs, um, you know, to be, have a kind of dog haircut at times, and she hates it, she resents it. Afterwards, she sulks for at least 24 hours afterwards. And it, it's funny, many, uh, many children are like that. I remember kids used to hate having a, I actually love getting a haircut now. I don't like the process, I just like, feeling clean and fresh and, and light and come on I think the Lord wants to come and give us a hurt he wants to prune our life that we may bear more fruit and I think the real key to understanding pruning is all about perspective are we looking at this as a good thing are we looking at this as a necessary thing are we looking at this just like pain and affliction and suffering or are we looking at it, no, God is doing something in my life to take away the bad things in me. And when that bad is gone, well, guess what? Um, he, you don't need to prune the same thing twice if it's been pruned. If, if the excess has been taken away, it doesn't need to be pruned again. And I think there is a pruning the Lord wants to do for all of us. And we can, like that two-year-old, we can run and hide when it's haircut time or... You know, we can, but we're not going to hide for very long. So I would say maturity in the Christian life is actually about embracing the season. It's about saying, Lord, what do you want to prune in me? Um, you know, how many of us love to go to the dentist? Not many. And yet, how many of us have learned going to the dentist and sitting there you know, with our mouth open and all this stuff going on there is actually far better than not doing that? And occasionally having, you know, our teeth cleaned or, or some plaque removed or whatever is a better universe to live in than just saying, you know, I'll run from that and I'll let it do its own thing. And then what do we end up doing? We end up going to the dentist in pain and suffering in in agony. And I, I think if maturity would be us coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, prune me. Ouch, be gentle, but prune me. Let me finish with this. And, and it's 
not a subject obviously I can cover in massive detail here, but it, is everything that happens to us the pruning of the Lord? I think there is a, I think there's both a glorious truth about the sovereignty of God and a must, much misunderstood truth. Is that, in my viewpoint, I would put it this way. I think as we walk through life, there are things that God will sovereignly do to us and wish us to go through experiences that we may grow, pruning if you will. I think the Lord will also use every single thing that comes against us. He'll use what the enemy does. He'll use what other people do. He'll use what even a fallen world will do. He'll use all of that and work it all together for our good. And so imagine this little guy called Graham. I'm walking through life and occasionally the Lord's like, you know, pruning me, if you will. But occasionally, even as Satan does things, the Lord's going to use that to prune me. Even as my own foolishness do things, God's going to use that to prune me. Even as other people around me, the fallen world, all of this kind of stuff, if you will, are going to prune me. Now, the Lord is sovereign over all of that. He's sovereign over it. But that, I think it's a really helpful thing to understand it. It doesn't mean that every experience you go through, God is initiating. So if you're watching this and maybe you lost a child or something like that, like my heart goes out to you. I, like, does God want to teach you things in the midst of that? Yes, but did he, did he cause that to happen? No. God is not evil. He's not tempted with evil. He doesn't send evil. And it's, under, it's, it's glorious that we can have this understanding there is a sovereign God who's in and above everything. And then we're going to walk through things. And I actually want to suggest to you it's a fool's game to try to um, play the game. You know, did God send this? Did God initiate this? Whatever. I, I think sometimes the Lord will show us those things and sometimes he won't. He won't. What we need to do is, number one, believe that he is God over and above all of these things. Number two, we need to actually learn the lesson and say, Lord, I want to grasp the thing you want to teach me in this season. And number three, we actually need to say, Lord, um, I want to have faith for victory in the midst of this. I want to triumph in the midst of afflictions and persecutions and these things. Lord, I am reaching out to you to manifest your glory in all of these things. So learn to cooperate with the Lord as he prunes you. Don't be like that little child. I'm not going to cut my hair. You know. Um, learn to say, okay, Lord, maybe I won't get this right now, but maybe I will in the future. And I want to be that vine that blooms and blossoms. You know, at times to say, to gently pray and say, Lord, show me the things ideally you would remove from my life that I might give glory to you. Bless you in Jesus' name. Back tomorrow with another video. Thank you guys for coming this far. Bye for now.